Have you ever played Tomb Raider and this was you? One hour later. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Fighting us. Class is in session. Yo, what's good, everybody? I have a couple of tips to give to you guys if you are going to be playing Tomb Raider Remastered. And the goal of this video is to get you guys to beat the game without referencing a guide and to have a approach to help you get through the game so you know what you're looking for. So furthermore, tip one, if you are stuck in Tomb Raider, you don't know where to go, you don't know what you're doing, you have no purpose in life, Frank West that joint and use camera mode. Fantastic. See, Lara listens to your boy. Camera mode is incredible because the camera will go anywhere your character can as long as there's not a door blocking it. You can literally view the whole level with camera mode as long as there's no obstructions to it. This will allow you to get a whole layout of the whole room you're in and look at different angles that you're not necessarily able to see well. And if you don't feel like platforming Lara, then you can just leave her in that spot and go ahead and look around yourself. Also, I have one tip for camera mode. Now, some of you might consider this cheating. However, if you buy the game, you should be able to do whatever you want with the game. And I discovered this and I wanted to share it because I think it's cool. Now, there's times in Tomb Raider where you hit a switch and the camera warps to a room where something happened in. Now, let's say you don't know where that room is at. When the camera warps to that room, you are actually able to activate camera mode and the camera will be in the room and you will be free to control the camera and you will be able to find out how you get into that room. And tip number two will be to just to learn the Tomb Raider formula in general. Tomb Raider loves to, loves to, loves to hide stuff from you and they're damn good at it too. They love to hide stuff in the dark as well. And Tomb Raider 1 has no flares either. So knowing that Tomb Raider likes to hide things from you, let's consider this tip. And if you see a texture in a level that's randomly in a spot, check it out. Let's say there's a whole bunch of plants randomly in a spot. Check it out because it can be a secret, a secret entrance, an item hidden, or a point of elevation for you to platform. Pushable blocks usually have some sort of indication letting you know they're pushable. Usually it's a circular ring on the bottom of the box. Sometimes it's a slash. It's something, usually. And more on the Tomb Raider formula is you might step on a distinct square. It might have a pattern on it or something, and it is actually a switch. Sometimes you might hit a switch and you will hear a door unlock. You will hear a water raise. You will hear a object move. You can activate a switch and travel somewhere and find out that you're on a timer because you did it too slow. Really think about the puzzle solutions and how you platformed and traversed yourself in certain situations because they're probably going to repeat the same concept in a future level. Tip number three is to understand the grid system. If you play Tomb Raider, on the retro graphics or you play the original, you will definitely see that the game is composed of a series of squares and square-like shapes. Your movement options are definitely dictated by the grid system as I think one step is half a square and a jump is a certain amount of squares and a running jump is a certain amount of squares. So understanding the grid system will show you the possible movement options that you have. Even more on the grid system, inclines, declines, and slopes actually really matter in this game. You might do a jump on a slanted square and be like, why isn't she grabbing the ledge? But you will actually have to go over to the higher side of the square and jump. There's even times where some structures have a decline and you will naturally slide if you step on them. There are some times where you will see these slanted structures and the change of slope will be so subtle that you think if you step on it, you will slide off. However, you're actually able to step on it and jump off of it. So you got to pay attention to the grid. Yep, really pay attention to elevation and flatness because sometimes they'll have a whole bunch of decline slopes. And in that structure is a flat part for you to jump. 
The fourth tip we have is to switch between old and new graphics. And the reason I say that is because retro graphics usually has better lighting. I can't tell you guys how many times I walked past the switch or a keyhole that I didn't see in modern graphics, but then when I went back there in retro graphics, I saw everything clear as day. And an additional note to this tip is, if you think there should be an important key item in a room, switch between modern and retro graphics. Because just look at this. And as you can see, there is a huge difference between the way keys look and retro graphics and modern graphics. You can easily miss keys on modern graphics. And the last tip for you guys would to be just to experiment with stuff. In my experience playing this game, some of the jumps that you have to do look deceptively long, but you're actually able to do them with a running jump. Remember all of your movement options, as well as adjust your height and timings for some of the jumps and actions that you have to do. Pay attention to some of the land architecture as some ledges might be able to be dangled on and you can shimmy to platform and expect everything since the first game that they introduced to you to be built on and become even more obscure in the later games. For example, let's say you're used to pushing blocks to platform and get you higher. Well, in the future games, they might have a whole bunch of blocks and you think you're supposed to platform to get higher. However, you move the blocks to actually find a new path. Some of these tips I gave you guys are tips I wish I'd known before I started playing Tomb Raider. So hopefully these tips stop you guys from referencing a guide. Hopefully they stop you guys from getting stuck and improve the quality of life of you playing the game. And that's all I have for you guys today. I will catch you next video. Vibe out.